In this class, we will address a problem on Lissajous figures. And let us state the problem first. In a cathode ray oscilloscope, the deflection of an electron beam by two mutually perpendicular electric fields is given by one is x equal to 4 cosine 2 pi nu t nu obviously being the linear frequency and the other one is y equal to 4 cosine 2 pi nu t plus pi by 6 the question asked is what will be the resultant path of electron beam we start with the answer noting that the relation between angular frequency omega and the linear frequency nu is given by the well-known relation omega equal to 2 pi nu. Let us rewrite these equations with the help of the angular frequency just for convenience. So x equal to And instead of 2 pi nu, let us write 4 cosine omega t. And from here, the value of cos omega t can be obtained to be x by 4. And we shall use it later. The next equation is y equal to And instead of 2 pi nu, let us rewrite it as omega t plus pi by 6, the phase part. And we can expand this part to get cos omega t cos pi by 6 minus sin omega t sine pi by 6 using the well-known trigonometric formula and again cos pi by 6 is root 3 by 2 while sine pi by 6 is sine 30 which is half so let us complete this line And again cos omega t can be replaced by x by 4 and we can write sin omega t as under root 1 minus cos square omega t. This gives So it is 1 minus x by 4 whole square. And also we can proceed further because this is x square by 16 which is equal to 
16 minus x square by 16 whole under root. So let us pick the terms correctly and rewrite this equation. So y equal to 4 instead of cos omega t we will write x by 4 and then we have root 3 by 2 minus instead of sin omega t we have this under root and finally we have a half so we have obtained an equation that connects y and x which describes the resultant motion which defines the path followed by the electron we have to find the nature of the path that this equation represents so let us simplify this further 4 and 4 will cancel out so the first term is x root 3 by 2 in the second term under root 16 is 4 which will be cancelled by this 4 and we are left with 16 minus x square and this half is staying there multiplying throughout by 2 let us bring 2y to the right side and this under root to the left side to get and now we square to end up with 3x square plus 4y square minus 2x root 3 into 2y let us arrange the terms properly x square taken to this side makes 4x square then we have a 4y square then we have 2 to the 4 4 root 3 xy the cross term and if we bring 16 to the other side we are left with minus 16 so this is the equation that we get and a further simplification can be done by dividing the entire equation by 4 and we are left with now what path or curve does this equation represent to find this out, we have to compare this equation with the standard equation, namely ax square plus by square plus twice hxy plus c equal to 0. Which represents an oblique ellipse provided h square minus a b is less than 0 for oblique ellipse which has x axis and y axis not as its symmetry axis that is it is an inclined ellipse inclined with respect to the x-axis and the y-axis they are not its major or minor axis in fact this is the major axis this is the minor axis which is different from x and y so let us identify the constants a b h and c evaluate h square minus a b and check if it is less than zero so comparison gives a equal to 1 
b equal to 1 2h equal to minus root 3 so h is equal to minus root 3 by 2 and c is minus 4 So this is h square minus a into b. And this is less than 0. And this means the equation that we got indeed represents an oblique ellipse. So we conclude that the resultant path or pattern described by this equation is an oblique ellipse. oblique with respect to x and y axis and this oblique ellipse will be traced by the electron beam due to these two electric fields applied in a CRO. We come to another problem according to which a stationary Lissajous pattern displayed on a CRO that is cathode ray oscilloscope is seen to be having five vertical tangents and six horizontal tangents if the frequency of horizontal input signal is 1800 Hz then determine the frequency of the vertical input signal. Let us move over to the answer we apply the formula FV by FH is equal to NH by NV where let us define these terms what they stand for where FV is the frequency of vertical signal that is vertically applied signal signal applied to vertical plates FH is the frequency of horizontal signal that is signal applied to horizontal plates NV is the number of vertical tangents or peaks and NH is the number of horizontal tangents or peaks. We have to find the frequency of vertical input signal that is a V. So we can write
Now there are six horizontal tangents and there are five vertical tangents and the horizontal frequency is 1800 Hz. So on evaluation it turns out to be 2160 Hz which is the answer.